Good afternoon. Well, not good afternoon. Hello. And um, we've got Gemico on the call. Very warm, warm welcome to Gemico, who is our current um, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen champion. He won last year and it was great fun doing commentary on his game with Sergi. It was a really, really good game. Um, but um, it'd be really good to hear from Gemico and thank you for joining us today. Oh, what a nice introduction. Thank you, Moody. And you call me J Jamaku? Jamaku. Jamaku. Yeah. Jama Jamaku. It's, it's uh, pronounced Jamacho. Jamacho. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Everyone's got a, a lesson into um, to how to say Jamacho. So so what's yeah. your what's your views on on uh just let's recap on on the final last year so so it was a great final but let's just hear your thoughts on on how the final went last year well i got i got a bit lucky to be honest uh Sengel's team was uh brilliant uh, his one turner seemed unstoppable so i had it uh had to think really careful about uh, when do I start? How do I set up? Uh, how do I maximize my chances to take the one turner out? And uh, it all didn't work. Uh, he, he stayed in. So I had to hope for the toss and I got a toss and that's how I won. So it, it was a bit of luck. Yeah. I, I, um, I remember watching, I think it was his second one turner where, where he had to blitz you out, out of the way. And, and I think he failed one of the passes so he, he had to make so many rolls a blitz to go for it just to push you out of the way and then and and it was just really really great to watch yeah he, he had a quick snap i think uh, so he could blitz yeah yeah, yeah it was terrible <laughs> but that, that but I, I think he he made one mistake yeah? and the mistake was that he started uh with a touchdown uh um and that way I could, uh, he had a touchdown, then I could start, and then I had two complete drives to uh, try to take him down. And I think that that, that was a mistake. Uh, if he won the toss, he would have had to let me win, uh, start. Uh, so I played, I played him in, in the, in the, I think it was the, the, the first round of a playoff, and he beat me 2-1. And, and it, I was so surprised that, that he just scores those one turners so quickly and and i've got an underworld team and and they're quite bashy not quite as bashy as as your werewolves but i i was i was surprised that he pretty much he's got so much confidence in trying to defend and and not lose all of the players but mm -hmm. it, it's it's a really good technique and and he's a great player but anyway you you won the game and you you say it was luck i was watching it a few of us were watching it and um and it, it was a great game to watch, but that was last season. So you 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 are in the playoffs, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. But um, you said yourself that your team you feel has passed its best. Um, so it'd be really good to get some some feedback from you as we run through the games. So I'm going to flick onto the next slide, which shows the bracket. Um, just just so people are watching, we've got um, a breakdown of each of the games. Um, so we'll go into a bit more detail um, as we go through through the rest of the um, um, slides. But what's your initial view on this? I, I really like the bracket, but I definitely think the left-hand side of the bracket is a little bit easier than the right-hand side of the bracket. And I'm quite lucky because my team are in the left-hand side. So what, what's your initial thoughts on the uh, bracket structure? Yeah, I think uh, Siggy did a really great job with brackets. Uh, I, I like the setup, but I have to agree. Um, if I look at the, the left one, the, the, the most fearful team is the, the, the cheaters. I really like your team. And then there are some outsiders, but they are... Uh, they're not real big contestants. Uh, I like the 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 bone stugs and entropy. I like the Cornish pirates, uh, the champions because they have a, a great player, but they are not uh, really great teams. Uh, I think uh, from the left uh, bracket, uh, the cheaters are the the best one, and you are the the second one. Yeah, I like. I really like the Wood Elves. Um, I I had to fill in in Division um, um, Four 
with a no it's free i played the champions in the pre-season and they they absolutely obliterate me um i think they're they're what what elves are always a threat aren't they but but we'll see later on he he's already got quite a few um players out which is a tip typical for what elves so then we go on to the dangerous right hand side and what jumps out to me here is is the chaos team who who um i can't connor bano Violent, violento um that team has developed so much um over they, they they were in my division so there's a lot of good teams in here and and obviously long overdue the rain and champions are in here and and i think we've got the free lizard men teams this side so what what's your thoughts on the right hand side well, they, they have a lot of uh, great teams uh, <laughs> the first one royal antwerp it has uh, 11 guard 11 or 12 guard players it's it's unbelievable it's a little bit bloaty on tv but the the, uh, the team itself with a death roller is uh, quite impressive uh, i think uh, yin yang lizards with ink uh, he's a great coach coach the team is also uh, really impressive i think he is a, a really strong contender for the for the title um, and then there are some others. I I like the real suckers team. Mm. <laughs> uh, I, I do not know a laughing boy uh, really well, but he has two uh, edge five vampires uh, that could do something. Um, and there are some uh, agile four skinks, so they they are always dangerous. Uh, but I haven't seen the. Conurbano Violento uh, team. I haven't seen it. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We'll see them shortly, and 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 they 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 are frightening. Okay. So, any final thoughts on this, or should we should we move on? I totally agree. We can move on. Okay. So here's the first game. We've got the uh, cheesy cheese cheaters v the Pokemon's. I'm going to flick. <laughs> up. We need to add here. The Pokemons were a wild card entry, and it was really interesting coming up to the last game of the season, or the, you know, the last few games of the season, because I think there's about four or five teams in contention for that wild card, and and the Pokemons got it in the end. So, so that 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 added a different flavour to to the playoffs this year. To have obviously we've got more play more coaches in the league, and to have that wild card, I think just adds a whole new dimension. So the first game we've got Pokemons v Cheesy Cheese cheetahs and what jumps out to me straight away is a massive massive potential team um, inducements the pokemons can get here um, so let, let's have your initial thoughts on 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 this game <sighs> well, I'm, I'm not sure if the the poker mans uh, stand uh, even a small chance uh, th their team is completely undeveloped um, My, Milo is a, is, a, is a good coach, but he has no tools to work with. Uh, I'm, unless the dice totally favor him, uh, he is. Uh, he has no chance. And uh, what, 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 so what jumps out is if you, if you look at Milo's um, win rate with lizards is forty six percent, and then you look at. Uh, Sengi's uh, win rate with Skaven is 65%, and 65% with a win rate with a team is massive in in any any league. So that jumps out to me, and I totally agree that the teams are quite imbalanced. The team, the, the 530 potential inducements. What what can you get there? What do you take against Sengi? You know, you've 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 played him a few times. Well, you have to you have to uh, diminish uh, Sengil's team. Uh, I'm not sure if a wizard does anything versus uh, the cheesy cheese cheaters. I would take a, a bribe, perhaps uh, um, some babes to to make sure my team survives. Um, I'm not sure if there is a star player with Mighty Blow because uh, the Pokemans do not have a reliable Mighty Blow. Uh, they, do have, not... they do have the Strength 5 um, Soros, don't they, um, with with Mighty Blow? Oxygore, but, but he has uh, 
the, the Kraxigor is not really reliable. No, there's a star uh, player you can take. Um, Sybil, Sybil, or something. Ah, yeah, Sybil. Yeah. Does he have Mighty Blow? I think so. Then I would take him. I have never, never, ever played Lizardman. So, so looking looking at this this page, it, it looks pretty pretty straightforward win for the for the cheesy cheese cheaters. But let's look at the next page and let's look at some of these. So if we look at these stats here, um, I, I've I've highlighted some areas and I've picked up the same as you. The 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 underdevelopment of the sources is is quite quite worrying, um, you know, and um, and just the skaven they are just frightening if you look at look at that blitzer um with with um th you know that that is a really high percentage of removals so anything you want to pick up here and if I, i've also added some averages of of removals and being removed which which is quite quite consistent here actually so what was your thoughts here well, he has two blitzers, the cheesy cheese cheaters. Uh, there is only one showing, but he has another one. Uh, he was out uh, uh, after the game versus me, but he's back. Okay. Um, but the the disadvantages disadvantage both blitzers have is they both have a nickel. Mm -hmm. So if uh, Milo is able to take him out quickly. Um, then uh, the Skaven are rather defenseless uh, in the blocking game. Yeah, and you can see that the the, the, the cheaters when they're getting getting hit, that they, they, <clears throat> they've got a forty four percent armor rake. You know, so nearly nearly fit nearly fifty percent of their hits is breaking armor. You know, that's yeah. and even if it's not necessarily a removal, it's it's just sometimes, especially when you're playing against skinks who have got that quite good movement. Um, you know, um, if, if you, even if you're stunning a few players, that's going to open up. So I think that's a, a big chance, and I really agree with you. By by getting a, a star player with mighty blow will really add to 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 the chances for Milo. Yeah, and I, that's also the reason I would take a bribe uh, to increase the the damage output, uh, and that's the reason I, I think a wizard is less. Um, Bible or effective? Well, let's face it. He's got enough. He's got enough inducements. He could take. He could take a lot of stuff, couldn't he? <laughs> but but this, yeah. I, I think this will be an interesting game. I, I my, my 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 prediction on this is that the the Skaven um, will win. I, I think Sengi will be looking at this. He'll he'll do his usual approach: a couple of one turn touchdowns and just ride out the lack of mighty blow. That's that's my view on this. Yes, I fear so. And if Milo is going to take Sibley, he's going to get blitzed and piled on and removed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that moves us on to our next game and, and two pretty fresh teams. Bones, Thugs and Entropy. Uh, Entropy I can't even say that word. Uh, versus the Cornish Pie right Rates. So again, these are two quite new teams. So let's look at the... Um, the stats. I really like their names. <laughs> They're genius. Yeah, unfortunately, I can't say the names. <laughs> um, so, so here, here we've we've shared the team. We've got um, um, we've got the oh, crikey, I can't see this. It's quite small. Um, we've got the undead versus chaos. So one of I think one of two chaos teams in the playoffs. So, <clears throat> um, what's jumping out at you here? Well, the the Chaos team is really well balanced. I really like the team. It's TV efficient. It has everything it needs. It has a tackle. It has a dirty player. It has an agile four. It has claw. The only thing it's missing, it's claw mighty blue and piling on. It only has one guard, but it's a it's a really nice team. I like it. Yeah, and 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 Adamator has has played only to play twenty four games as a chaos coach, and that's quite an impressive record, isn't it? Six sixty five percent from twenty four games is is pretty impressive. Um, yes, it so, is. Um, but then we've got the um, the undead. They've got a fair amount of team value. Um, 
you know that that could play quite a big part in this game but there's they're nowhere near as developed as a chaos team are they so um you'd like i like to see a couple of the mummies with block or at least one with block it just gives you that little bit of reassurance but but they're quite underdeveloped um, but it's a new team so so yeah that's what jumps out but here, uh-huh. here, look, looking at the these two teams here um it's there's some if you if we look at the the pirates uh, record that that top area i've highlighted they're unbe- yeah. uh, unbeaten they, they've won six won six drawn two but look at those stats 11 touchdowns four four against 19 casualties four three against you know that they are some really solid solid stats aren't they yeah 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 i haven't blinked uh Adam Mantor, Adam Mator before, well, he, he looks uh, quite good. And you can see the um, the undead. The, the, all, all of their offense is around the two goals, um, but again, they're, they're just block dodge goals, quite underdeveloped. Um, but you know, they, they they play a really hard running game. You know, four hundred. Uh, meters running between them in so far you know and then they 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 focus their their main attack from the two two mummies which have got guard but again i think the diff, the challenge here is going to be the development issues or or different development between the two teams but it's um could be quite close but i'm thinking the chaos will will win this i agree <laughs> It's not that easy to score as an undead coach, and definitely if you get out strength and you have to position really careful to to avoid the claw on your mummies, uh, I think uh, Chupa will need some luck to win. The, the, the only saving grace that I can see for the undead is is there's only one tackle on the chaos team, and and. <clears throat> And we all know that those ghouls, they're, they're, they're your target. When you're playing an undead, you just nail the ghouls. Once you, once you remove a ghoul or two, you get a numbers advantage. They haven't got regenerate, which, you know, they are your main target. But, but Adamator has only got one tackle. So that, that could, be, um, could be the difference. And he has a wrestle, a wrestle beastman. Yeah. Uh. But those claws will be coming out against the um, the mummies, I'm sure. Good. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now it's me, the slum slumbog scummers, um, my 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 lovely underworld team versus the the um, orcs of total brainlock. Uh, I really like the orc team. It's really really TV efficient. Yep. Um, I. Was missing the Blitzer and the Black Cork, so perhaps not that TV efficient. But I think it's a good team. It has a lot of guard, has a lot of block. He has uh, the Mighty Blue piling on tackle dude, uh, and he has an agility four lineman. Uh, that that's not that's not great, um, but it's a good team. And Benzo is not a. a, a really experienced coach but i played him once and he did uh pretty well yeah um, uh, he, he's never played according to to spike he's never played against an underworld team you know um so his win record against underworld is zero percent so i'll i'll hopefully be <laughs> banking up but yeah i've considered the returning players and the team value which is why the maximum um tv i can get is 260 so i ah. will i will be definitely taking glart who is the strength floor for skaven blitzer with claw um so so that that that's what i'll be taking there and my record against orcs is about 53 percent i i've played a lot of orcs but i've 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 never paid i've played benzo in one of our side, side leagues but um yeah it's a, I, I agree with you he's got a good balanced team um i can't remember whether ripley his blitzer whether that's a niggle or whether that's just a miss next game but he does have a few potential niggles which i will be targeting with my two blitzers 
Uh, I think you you have a really good shot at winning. Uh, but it won't be easy. He has three tackle players. Uh, you rely on your uh, touches. Uh, how, how important are your your goblins in a game? Um, so so it, I've I've pulled this slide up because we can see when you said I rely, I I I relied one hundred percent on my thrower, which was. Altich there with six touchdowns, massive running, um, and he had um, um, block, uh, big hand, and extra arms. But he got nailed in the last game, so he's been sacked. So I've now got a vanilla thrower. Um, but my goblins, they 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 are important in the game. Just just pretty much typical cannon fodder. Um, but 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 my uh, the strength of my team is is in those bottom three players, which is the, the two blitzers and and my blodge sidestep troll. Um, <laughs> so you know I think this is going to be quite close. I really do because um, he hasn't got he's got two mighty blow, and if you're hitting goblins or armor class um, armor class that's dungeons and dragons for you. If you're hitting um, um, AV7 people with Mighty Blow you're going to remove people and I get a lot of players removed in my games you can see I get a lot of casualties, 25 but I also lose a lot of players and I, and I think that will be the difference in this game um, at, sorry he's got 3 Mighty Blows so I just need to get in quite quickly with my Skaven um, my Blitzers and just try and get some of get ahead of the game I mean, if you look at my my when I'm blocking, I break 50% of my blocks. 50% of the armor break. 50% of my blocks result in an armor break. You know, that is the only mechanism I've got to try and score. Um, but he's got quite a solid team here. Is there anything that jumps out from you here? Hmm. Well, I was thinking uh, you said you were going to take Glart. Uh, that, that's not about the slide, but uh, how much does Glart cost? He's 210, so at least that, that, so I can potentially take Glart and a babe, I think, is, is, is what I can get from a team value difference. I have no, no other thoughts. Uh, I think it will uh, depend on the blocking dice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I think you're right. In this game, I think this game will be decided quite early. When when if if my claw mighty blow um, kick in early, then I'll get a numbers advantage. If Benzo's mighty blow and tackle kick in early, he'll get a numbers advantage. And I think this game will be decided by turn four or five. I think. So we're moving on to our next game. Um, We've got, here's the Wood Elves. Let's um, so we've got the Wood Elves versus Bretonia, which is going to be an interesting game. What's your thoughts here? Quite quite close team value, um, which is good. But what jumps out to me is the 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 nine players of the Wood Elves, which is quite standard i think for a developing wood elf team isn't it they, they they don't carry many players but there's some great development there already isn't there yeah, i'm not i'm not sure i i do not like um the amount of increased movement i'm not sure it adds uh, a lot in a game uh, i like one player with increased movement to increase the chance for one turn touchdown but I don't, I don't know if, if three uh, increase a lot. Uh, certainly not in a team that's not uh, really big on development. I, I think he's building his team in the in the long run. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and and his win his his record is great. Playing the the Dust Bunny, uh, who's also a, a previous winner of of the G Cup. That is some impressive record, isn't it? Nearly 70% win rate with Wood Elves. Um, yeah, he, he plays really secure. I really like his playing style. He almost makes no mistakes. Uh, I think he's one of the best players in the league. 
absolutely. And 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 his opponent has only played seven games with Bretonia, so he's he's there's a there's quite a difference in knowledge of the team you're playing. So mm. I think that'll be a a, 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 a key difference. And and I, I think um, these Wood Elves are actually a really if I was a betting man, these are someone I'd, I'd put money on to, to progress quite far in this tournament because the coach is so good. But right, let's go, let's look at the, the stats. So here we go, and 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 I've I've highlighted again at the top um, Dust Bunny's record. That's that's yeah. amazing, you know. Um, but look at the difference in casualties. He, he's he's been murdered, and to have a team this well developed or developed with that much murder is is quite <laughs> quite quite good i totally agree mm. and mm. the the blitzers as you'd expect to see on a bretonian team are the bulk of the carriers and and the damage dealers i i think i think bretonian blitzers are, are really solid pieces on the blood bowl pitch and 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 he's definitely focused everything on those guys hasn't he yeah and he has you know he only has one tackle, no tackle mighty blow. He has no sure hands. Uh, it, the the Bretonian coach doesn't remove uh, Bunny's team quickly. Uh, he will lose. Mm -hmm. And 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 but they're, they're both very damaged teams, aren't they? So, so what well, when I say damaged, they're, they're they're both more likely to be removed and removed. Which I think will definitely play in the Wood Elves' favour here. I mean, but Wood Elves, like all team, uh, all Alvin teams, if they've, if uh, if you've got your key players on, your 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 war dancers and your catchers, you 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 can you can play a team of seven with well, a team of eight with four players and still still get a result. So it's um, going to be quite an interesting game. But I think the experience of the coaches here will win the game. Um, the Bretonian coach, Acad, Acad, uh, I shot. What well, I need to get everyone's name written down in a way that <laughs> I, I can pronounce it. Um, I think his experience of seven games as a Bretonian coach, with a good record for those seven games against someone of the caliber of a Dust Bunny with seventy percent win record with Wood Owls, that's the difference here. I think. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> So here's 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 the dwarfs. You've been talking about these dwarfs, and and there's been a lot of a lot of uh, commentary about, or not commentary. There's been a lot of questions around the death roller. <laughs> uh, yeah, I already checked them out. Uh, the team. So what jumps out is is these these dwarfs, and and this coach has not played against lizards. And and I think everyone knows that lizards are a, a fantastic team, um, and and not have an experience against a lizard team, even if you've got a solid dwarf clustered of guard everywhere. We we all know lizards. And Ian Ian B, sorry, my dog's howling outside. Ian is a really good lizard coach as well. He's quite new to a league, so. But it's interesting that um, the uh, uh, dwarfs haven't faced lizards before. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, but there, there is a big TV difference, and I've uh, I saw one game of uh, Annihilator, um, and he likes to base up. Yeah, uh, and I think this is the big uh, disadvantage for the lizardmen if they get based up. Um, good uh, and i think it's going to happen so uh he's going to immobilize the lizardman early on uh, and that's going to be difficult for the for the lizardman yeah so i, I think again the we're going to see the the sora star player here um because because ian's uh Soros aren't that well developed it's interesting that he's taken two sources with dodge I think probably throughout the main season he was chuckling, saying, "Yeah, I've got Dodge and my Soros in his first game in the playoffs as dwarfs." He's probably gutted. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's a, 
could have been better, I think. Uh, uh, Dutch is not a, a good choice at the moment, uh, perhaps in the long run. Um. No. And, but, but looking at this page, Ian's defense... I mean, I've seen a few games of Ian. He, he, he plays at the same tabletop club as me, so... And I, I, I pulled him into to our league, and that is a really impressive defensive record. To to only to only concede four touchdowns in in seven games is pretty pretty good. Um, yeah. Um, but then you just look at that guard and that mighty blow. Um, it, it's it's going to be hard. Even with that team value, it's going to be really really hard. Well, I think uh, here here comes the 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 challenge for an annihilator. If he isn't uh, putting his dwarfs on in a compact way, um, it will be difficult to stop the skinks. Uh, if uh, Ian takes a wizard and the ball uh, gets in a tough spot and uh, Annihilator is not able to de defend the ball, um, he's going and the ball gets uh, snatched, uh, he's going to lose. So, Yeah, and, and we all know that Dwarf struggled to score it just because of their low movement. Um, but actually, um, Annihilator has, has, got, has scored the same amount of touchdowns as Ian, and conceded one less than Ian. So I think Ian, who is a, a solid lizard man coach, is really, the odds are massively against him in this game. But it's going to be an interesting one, but I don't think any of us want to yeah. I don't think any of us want to see dwarves progress, do we? They're just not, they're just not right dwarves. They, they shouldn't be in this, in this world. <laughs> <laughs> I must say, I, I would prefer to play the Lizardmen uh, than uh, the Dwarves. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Talking the Lizardmen, here we have two extremely good Lizardmen teams. Yes, I agree. Um, and and two very good coaches. So, big, te big TV difference here. Um, Ink and... Um, you know, he, he's very experienced. He's got a 62% win rate with his Lizards against a 54% win rate. Um, but that 460 against two Lizard team, looking at this page, it, it, it it's all looking down to that development of the Sauruses for me. And, and 460, I don't think, is going to fill that big gap. And I think jumping out at you... <laughs> No, I, I totally agree. Uh, Ink has a lot of strategic skills. Uh, he knows how to use his tackle, Mighty Blow Palmer, really well. He knows how to use his guard uh, in an efficient manner. He has a lot of guard. He has four guards. He has the AJ4 skink. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, GT Tausig uh, has a big chance, uh, to be honest. Um, but t talking of Ink, though, he, if he's he scored eight touchdowns and conceded yes. ten. H how 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 has he progressed? You know, on average, he's he's you know his record isn't great considering that team is great. I, I know I know he's in amongst some really really great teams in Division One, but you know I'm surprised that that he's got. He's progressed because that's that that's jumps out at me. Yeah, but he he got uh, I would say almost obliterated in his first two matches, one against Sengil and one against me, uh, in which we almost removed uh, half of his team. Uh, I think uh, Sengil scored three touchdowns. I scored three touchdowns. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it looked over after two two matches, uh, but he he came back. He he had a great comeback. He um, he had uh, more wins than draws. A lot of our teams had draws uh, in Division One, and that's the way he he made it. So that that's really impressive. If he got annihilated in the first two games, and then to not lose for five, and then then brilliant. So that that. 
it tells you information behind data is really important and and um, you know yeah. that 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 says a lot and and if we look at gt he spreads his love around those skinks a lot doesn't he but what 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 i'm really impressed with his croxagore has actually ran the ball <laughs> what's going, <laughs> what's, go, what's going on there ah and he has two two injuries uh, the croxigore yeah uh, both croxigores ha ha have an, a niggling uh, uh, it, but the development of those sources is is key the the team value will give i'm assuming gt will take the additional saurus but the lack of guard the lack of development i i, I think that ink is is going to continue his unbeaten run of five games and and potentially make it six yes i agree oh your good self against uh laughing boy the real suckers yes right so uh, uh, there's been a lot of talk actually about how laughing boy uh was able to get two languages in spike um you know I, I don't know whether he's showing off that he can can speak two languages or showing off that he can make spike bot <laughs> record that you speak two languages so so this this obviously isn't about um language speaking but i just wanted to let you know there was a bit of um questioning around that but here we've got two two great coaches and um two very interesting teams so let's hear from you on this but one thing i want to say is your win rate with the necromantic is phenomenal 72 percent win rate with that team is 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 just a fantastic record so that's what jumps out at me and pretty much every vampire team you've played with this team you've won um or sorry with you know you've, you've won so you know vampires you know how to play against them you're playing with a team that you've got a 70 two percent i think the statistic wise laughing boy also looks like he knows how to play against a necromantic so i think that this is going to be a coach on coach epic what's jumping out at you <laughs> apart from those frightening vampires with with agility five well I, i'm not really sure uh, if you're um, familiar with the dangers of statistics um but vampires is a really rarely played team yeah. and that uh, can skew the 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 statistic statistics a lot uh, i think i have played about four or five games uh, against vampires and i'm not sure if laughing boy has played a lot of games in total he has played uh, 43 games um perhaps he has only played uh, five games against the necromantic yeah. so i'm not sure about the power of that uh, statistic <laughs> very very safe and and um balanced uh, answer you, you you could be a politician well, well I, I like his team his team is uh, is really challenging uh, vampires can surprise you a lot uh, agile five can surprise you uh his team is uh, balanced it's lacking guard it's lacking tackle but it has a lot of core power uh, that's uh, what i like about it um, and if you look at the the tv difference uh, uh, i it, it was uh, it was two, um, two, 210 210 i think Yes, I think the TV difference now is 90, not 210, but 90, because I have some cash and he got his vampire back and he fired a troll. The, the, difference, uh, the difference is 60 uh, and he has 90k in the bank, so he uh, organized his team so he could take a wizard. Wow. And I think taking a wizard is his only chance uh, for a win. Well, I... I, I... I've, I've seen you play a few times and and what I think you do really well because I, you, a lot of the games you're going into you're playing against a wizard and the way you work your two ghouls is really clever you you, 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 you almost play one behind the other but a safe enough range where where if the wizard does come you've got your one in backup so so I, I, I think it's really interesting that he's structured his team to get that wizard um, 
and and I've seen I've seen Laughing Boy play vampires, and I think it was the last game of the season. Um, and he he's a really solid coach with vampires, which are incredibly hard. But I think vampires are the hardest team to play in 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 the game. I do, um, but he's really solid. But um, yeah, I I think looking at this, your your removal rate is is actually it's it's pretty similar i thought your removal rate would have been higher than that with your two crazy werewolves but um you know it's going to be an interesting one i'm really this is one of the games i'm really looking forward to because i've seen you play this team a lot and i've seen laughing boy play this team so i'm really looking forward to this yeah the 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 the, the difficulties that my team has, and if if you watch uh, my um, the last few games, I had four draws. Um, my team is really vulnerable for bad dice. I, the, I pick up the ball on a three plus. I do not have an agile four uh, ghoul, so I'm pretty vulnerable for bad pickups. Uh, and I, if I have a bit of bad luck, um, it's easy to draw against me. Uh, and I think that is a weakness that the vampires do not have. Uh, so I have more killing power, but I'm also a little bit more vulnerable for bad luck. Um, yeah, but I think that's a key thing. I mean, a draw in 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 the season proper is a great result. A draw in a playoff means overtime. And and <laughs> and if you if you look at the vampires, not only are they getting removed by you, they're getting removed by themselves. So if, if this does go into overtime, and I don't know how many of the thralls will be left standing because, you know, so, so I, think, I think a draw over the 16 turns will be more than enough for the necromantic. But I, 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 it's, you know, it's about attrition, isn't it? And they haven't, he had, uh, laughing boy. Well, mind you, he's got he's got mighty blow on on all of on four of those vamps. I didn't realise that until now. Actually, crikey! So he is going he is going for it. And and the average armor on the necromantic team isn't great. It must be eight. Um, so yeah, it could be a very well. Uh, this is a game I'm really looking forward to. Yes, I, I'm not convinced I'm going to win. So uh, <laughs> it, it, it will be tense. Uh, I think it's a difficult start. And now we're moving on to one of my favorite teams, Conabano Violento. I can't even say the name, but I really like this team. And yeah, the, I, I, I think it's a really balanced chaos. Team. I think the two chaos teams we've covered today are in next season or the following season, they're going to be up there challenging for, 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 for the title. Um, this is another really balanced um, uh, chaos team. Um, he hasn't got a lot of tackle, but you don't really need that against Kamari, which is which is good. But that is a big team value difference, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, having a lot of block is really solid. The mighty blow claw is really uh, will be difficult um, if he gets a hit on the tomb guardians. Uh, the only thing it's it's missing piling on, and claw claw mighty blow is good, but it's not not um, not a game changer on itself. Um, uh, without piling on, it can it can be uh, subpar, I think. Uh, but the, the 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 massive amount of block is going to uh, help a lot, I think. And he's got a, he's got a couple of guard in there, which is good, and and it's always good to have got guard on your chaos warriors. Um, but what jumps out at me is just saying has only played seven games with with Kamari, and and obviously with this team because that's him being here. Um, so he hasn't got a lot of experience playing Kamari, and then. Um, the um, Lionheart has got a lot of experience playing Chaos. Not a great record for Chaos, actually. I, I, I would have thought that that was, was a higher record. But um, yeah, so that 480 team value um, will be interesting. Uh, 
perhaps he has played well, 109 games with Chaos, so perhaps he has played a, a lot of more uh, games, and a win rate of 56 is not is not bad. So I think uh, Irik uh, is a is a pretty decent coach. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah, he's he, yeah. he's a very good coach. Yeah, and and. Looking at looking at his top line statistics again, he's not been beaten. Um, he beat me in in it was a close game actually, but he did beat me. But look at that: ten touchdowns, four, three against, nineteen casualties, four, five against. You know, it's a really really solid. Both yeah. these chaos teams look quite. You know, they're, they're developing well. They've got good coaches, and they've just had solid seasons. But that, I, I didn't know what to highlight on here because it just seems that everyone is doing something of value in that team. Yeah, it's it's a really balanced team. Uh, and I would think it's uh, pretty efficient at defense. Uh, I'm not surprised uh, he had so uh, not a lot of touchdowns against. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to really, it's going to be really difficult for just saying uh, <laughs> yeah. A genius name, just saying. Mm. <laughs> and um, he's he's got he's got a throw ra with 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 agility, which is which is brilliant. You know, once you get once you get a throw ra with plus agility in that team, you you protect them. Uh, but I think with the amount of decay, these guys do have decay, don't they? Yeah, the Toon Guardians yeah. have decay. I think. The amount of decay on the big players, and you can see from the stats, he puts a lot around his Tomb Guardians. Um, and I think that claw and mighty blow against that decay will be the game changer. I, I, I can see at least two of those Tomb Guardians out of the game by half time because Eric will just go for them um, if he's defending or attacking. And, and then I think it'll just. I think this is going to be another Chaos win, unfortunately. Or fortunately. Depending yeah. on which coach you are. I agree. The, just seeing is, is lacking block. He's lacking guard. He has no dirty player. Um, he has almost no tools in his uh, in his shed. Uh, I fear for him. Yes. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, I, I did not know, notice that uh, it got dark in the room. So it, it is getting late, isn't it? But um, so I really, it was really good fun talking through through these teams, and and it's there's some really good matchups here, and and it's been, you know, but my summary and what I've seen today is I like the champions. I think they are. <laughs> They are a dark horse, and and the Dust Bunny is a solid, solid coach. Um, I think the Chaos teams, maybe not this season, but definitely in future seasons, are going to be up there. They 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 look frightening, really well balanced. Um, but there's some really juicy games in here. You against uh, Laughing Boy will be great. The 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 Lizard Jewel, I think that'll be a great fun game. Um, and you know, all I can say is, I just hope those dwarfs get knocked out. <laughs> uh, I, uh, um, I'm hoping with you. So, <laughs> well, the uh, annihilator. He, I think, he lives only 15 kilometer kilometers uh, from me. He's a, a fellow uh, Belgian. Well, uh, no, uh, it, it looks really fun. Thank you for making this uh, Moody uh, Moody Hound. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you put in uh, a lot of work. You uh, uh, you found the right right statistics. You highlight uh, interesting facts. Uh, thank you for doing this. No, thank you for your time. And 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 definitely, if if you don't get to the final. I'm I'm not as convinced as you are that your team are over the hill. I think you've got a solid team. Um, but if you don't get to a final, it'll be great to have you doing joining us in the commentary box. Um, because I, I don't think my poor little underworld will get there. I think um, I, I'll be I'll be lucky to get past the orcs, and if I do, um, 
saying uh, the cheesy cheaters are just going to murder me again. But this has been really good fun. And thank you very much for your time. And good luck to Belgium in the Euros, by the way. Yes, thank you. It, it was with a lot of pleasure. It's the first time I can uh, talk about Blood Bowl without uh, people um, turning their heads away. So uh, it was really nice. Thank you. All the best. Yes. Bye-bye.